Hello everyone and welcome to the Information Cycle Assignment Overview video. In this assignment, we're going to explore the information cycle. The information cycle refers to the changes in quality, accuracy, and source type that information goes through from when it first enters our domain of knowledge and as it expands over time. Knowledge is not created in a vacuum. We always start with some event, and then as we learn more after that event and get further away in time, you'll start to see changes in the amounts and types of information available. This also plays into the idea of why we have primary and secondary sources, which is also something that you'll explore in this assignment. For the assignment, you are going to read and evaluate three sources to investigate how the information cycle affects their contents. You will practice evaluating whether these sources are primary or secondary, as well as popular or scholarly based on their characteristics. So just like sources can be either popular or scholarly, or maybe somewhere in the spectrum, same thing for primary and secondary. There are some primary sources, some that kind of fit a middle role, and then some very secondary sources. You will also consider changes in the audience and purpose of these sources. Finally, you will describe how the information changed between the sources based on information format, coverage, depth, and quality in order to explain when you might use each type of source. For today's assignment, you do not have to find any sources. There are three sources on our Moodle page under Information Cycle for you to use. One is a YouTube video, one is a news website, and one is a scholarly journal article from one of the databases. For part one, you're going to read over your three sources. And for each, evaluate whether you think they are primary or secondary and popular or scholarly. Explain your decisions based on characteristics discussed in the course materials and the assignment overview videos. You should include at least two reasons to support each decision. So we're going to not just label what we think they are, but we're going to take a couple of characteristics based on what we've been learning to explain why they are. And I have an example in the assignment that we'll go over in a second. Once you've done your evaluations for primaries, secondary, and popular scholarly, based on those, identify the audience and purpose of each source. These identifications do not need to be justified, but they should be specific. The reason for that is, depending on if it's primary, secondary, popular, or scholarly, that will kind of tell us a little bit about what kind of audience and what kind of purpose the source has. You'll be graded based on your answer's accuracy and how well you explain and support your evaluations with evidence. So here's an example of a single completed evaluation. I've said that it's primary, and then under explanation, I've given two reasons why. I say that it's primary because it's happening in near the time of the event, about a week after, so still pretty close in time. And it's also primary because it reports facts rather than analyzing information. So those are my two reasons that it is primary. If I had said it was secondary, I would instead put two reasons that I thought it was secondary. I also said that it was a popular source based on two things. One, that it had a non-expert author, which is a journalist, rather than a subject specialist, and it provides no formal citations. Both of those are characteristics that indicate it's popular. Again, if I had said it was scholarly, I would have put two characteristics that indicated it was scholarly. For audience and purpose, I'm being detailed, but I'm not having to explain it. So for my audience, it's general because it's a popular source. We know that popular sources tend to be more for a general audience. And then purpose, to inform audience of known facts about the event at the time of publication. This is especially true of news stories, but there may be a more specific thing that they're actually reporting on. So just like I did here for the example, for each of your three sources, you're going to say, is it primary or secondary? Why? Popular or scholarly? Why? and then the audience and purpose based on what you've evaluated here. 
part two is going to be a reflective question. In a comprehensive paragraph, compare how the information about the 2016 flooding changed between your three sources. So in this one, we are looking at the overall big picture of how the information about this event changed. All three sources are about the same event, but they come out at different points in time and from different types of people. Your paragraph should fully explain your reasoning and support your statements with evidence. It must also discuss each of the following questions. How did the information format, such as video, newspaper article, change between your three sources? How did the coverage, depth, and quality of information change between your three sources? Coverage would refer to how much did they cover? Was it very broad? Was it very specific? Did it look only at a very isolated incident or area, or did it expand it out into something bigger? Depth would be how specific and how much information. Was it just a few facts? Was it a lot of well-researched information? Just like with popular and scholarly, some of the characteristics about the sources can tell us if they're going to be useful for a particular need or not. Primary sources can help you and give you information that's different than secondary sources. So things from the beginning parts of the information cycle may be more beneficial for certain situations than others. Same thing for things later in the cycle. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.